President Biden may have won the first official Democratic primary of 2024 in South Carolina. However, turnout was only 4 percent. I mean, there is no voter intensity in that party there. Speaking of low numbers, the current commander in chief is facing a stubborn polling problem. The latest NBC News survey has Biden at an abysmal 37 approval rating, 37 percent, 60 percent disapprove. That's the worst in this particular poll. He trails former President Trump by double digits in several categories. Trump is up 16 percent on competency and effectiveness, 22 percent on the economy, 35 percent on immigration and border security. A Democratic polling expert says, quote, what is most concerning is the erosion of Biden's standing against Trump compared to four years ago. Most damning, the belief that Biden is more likely to be up to the job. The chief tenet of the Biden candidacy has evaporated, end quote. Power panel, Doug Collins, former Georgia congressman, Patrick Murphy, former Pennsylvania congressman. Gentlemen, great to have you on the program. Thanks, so, Harris. Patrick, I'm going to you. start with you. What's wrong with your guy? What happened? Well, Harris, <laughs> uh, listen, Doug and I are both former federally elected officers uh, in this country, members of Congress after serving in combat. And we both will tell you that the number one poll that counts is the election ballot. And Joe Biden just won with 96 percent of the vote albeit only 4% voted in that election yeah. in South Carolina. But listen, that's the one that really counts. There is 273 days, Harris, until Election Day. A lot of that's an eternity of politics, so we'll see. I've never seen you spin anything like that. <laughs> I'm trying. I mean, you're trying it's, to sell 96% of 4%. Hey, there, listen, because people you know, know that he's going to be the nominee. If I had a bigger heart, I'd actually send you some talking points that would work. <laughs> Doug. Well, I don't think Patrick needs talking points. I don't think nobody cared in South Carolina because it had already been written off. The Democratic machine had already said Ooh. Biden's going to win it. Nobody showed up. And the intensity wasn't there. I mean, and, and that's true. Here's the big thing, though, Harris, about you bringing out the numbers. And I think Patrick would agree with me on this. These numbers are bad for Biden. And they're the problem that is, is just mm. confounding this campaign. But if you look at the head-to-head -head with Biden, he is a little bit better in the polling, 45, yes. 46, even up you know, to within two or three points of Trump. They're pretty even in a lot of these polling. And that should make Republicans understand that this is a long-term fight. The longest general election that we've had in over 100 years is probably going to take place this year. And in fact, it's already started. Trump and Biden are against each other. Trump is the nominee from the Republican Party. And this is going to be a long fight that we need to keep focused on, no matter what these numbers are at this point. You know what? That is brilliant, too. Because when viewers come up to me and they, they want to know who's going to win and all of that, I say, you know what? It's too early to say who will win. What you need to decide is your vote. Are you going to vote early? You going to show up? What are you going to do? Because yep. that is what matters. And Patrick is so right about that. Well, when asked about Biden's showing in the South Carolina primary, Congressman Jim Clyburn downplayed Biden's loss of support among black voters. Watch this. His largest percentage, over 97 percent, was in the town of Orangeburg, where there are two HBCUs and a community college. And he got the largest percentage of the whole state. So that demonstrates to me what I've been saying all the time, uh, that Joe Biden has not lost any support among African Americans. Recent polls show a significant loss in black voter support, though, for Biden, now compared with 2020. Reverse order now, Doug. Yeah, I, I think that was spinning South Carolina really well there because it just affected what they want to talk about. But I'll just go back to a poll, Fox News poll last week uh, in Georgia. Demographic broke down African-American voters. Uh, Trump was getting 23 percent of the African-American vote in Georgia. And it was just a poll from last week in the state of Georgia. You're mm -hmm. seeing this across the country. Again, Republicans are not looking at getting 40, 50 percent of the African-American vote. It's just not happened in historical reference. But uh, a Republican candidate nationwide or in some of these states who get you know, close to 20 or between 11 and 25, those are winning numbers. Those are numbers that says Donald Trump will be the next president of the United States. You know, it's interesting. And, and Donald Trump worked on the economy for the whole nation, but he pointed out what happened for mm -hmm. blacks and Hispanics in this country under him, that, that you saw historic lows in unemployment, that whole thing. What in the world would Biden do if Trump started showing up at black churches and black communities? Just show up. 
I mean, just start showing up because those people are not being talked to right now, obviously, if they're not showing up at the primary polls or telling you on camera, which they're not, that they're supporting Biden. Patrick. Hey, hey Harris, I, I think President Biden is showing up. The, the fact is, President Biden is president because of South Carolina. People forget four years ago, he lost Iowa by four points. He lost New Hampshire. He no, we fourth. know it's because of South Carolina. Yeah. What's he going to do without South but, Carolina? But I, but is I think the he was, but he showed up at Mother Emanuel Historic Church just over a week ago talking about how he, he when he, as president, what he delivered for the black community, things such as we the first it, black woman, it. like the first black woman ever elected, ever appointed to the U.S. Supreme Court, and Justice Brown Jackson. 50% approval rating in the black community. Lastly, the largest increase in black-owned businesses in the last so 30 years. So why has it gone mission. down since 2020? That's what we're looking at. And also, why was it only, and I hear you, oh, 4% intensity, the only 4% of the, the electorate showed up for the primary just recently. I, I, I understand that, that there's, you know, an also-ran type of thing with Biden. Doug, last word. I think the last word is, is look, the, both sides are getting out and fighting, and there is a significant drop in this, uh, no matter how you spin it. And look, South Carolina's going for Trump in November anyway. This is a mute point. All right. Last word from you, Patrick. Uh, I agree with Doug. It's really not about South Carolina. It's about Georgia. Georgia is a state that President Biden won, granted by 12,000 oh, wow. votes. That is going to be close in nip and tuck. But now, again, now we've migrated to Georgia. Hey, well, it's, it's, it's an <laughs> You just gave South up Carolina on either. the whole state D of South Carolina. Doug doesn't want Patrick Murphy to come down to Georgia, but I'm going to see my battle buddy down there. But it's going to be. Well, if you again, go to Georgia, I'll come too. That's my, my home state, my birth state anyway. All right, yeah. gentlemen, thank you. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.